Hello, and welcome to Miro Distributed. Today, I'm going to tell you about using design thinking to create data visualization products. My name is Celeste Scott, and I'm a principal consultant with SEI. And in my practice doing design thinking with lots of different clients, I often turn to Miro. About two years ago, I was given a challenge to help an Ivy League university uh, build a data hub. When I first was given this challenge, it felt a bit like standing in the middle of an empty classroom. A data hub? For what? What did that even mean? So today I'm going to walk you through that journey. Ultimately, the challenge we tried to solve was helping deans and senior leaders of a large university access reliable, timely, and relevant data to inform their decision making about the operations of academic departments. The context of this challenge was really interesting for me. The data that they wanted to access was distributed all across a lot of different data sources. There was student information and course listings, physical space, HR, finance, grants management, you name it, it was all in different databases. And as a result, leaders really struggled to access and analyze data cross-functionally. So today I'm gonna to tell you about my method of how we went about solving this product or problem and how this ultimately became a product that around 70 different people are using. So we started to with discovery, we scoped a minimum viable product, we started to wireframe, iterate, and build all within Miro, and then ultimately delivered. In the discovery phase, we started with about 21 user interviews. As I went through these interviews, of course there was a script, and of course we asked so many different probing questions, but we needed a way to record and capture the data that we were collecting. So we recorded every single thought, discrete thought coming out of those interviews as a separate line in an Excel workbook and ultimately copied and pasted that entire column of data straight into Miro and voila, we had lots of stickies telling us every different thing that, that user had said. Repeat this 21 times and you can imagine we came up with lots and lots of stickies. So to parse our way through those, a colleague and I began to code all of the stickies so that we could surface themes more quickly. Simultaneously, we did a visual inventory of all of the current state reporting artifacts that felt important to the same users that we were interviewing. So every time somebody said, well, I really want to be able to replicate this report, I said, can I have a copy of that? And then we screenshot every single page, tucked it in Miro, and as a result, we're able to build a lot of connections between the report that person A was getting versus person B, and ultimately, I called this my crime scene map, and you can see that with all of these crazy connections dancing all over the place, uh, showing us that certain visuals were nearly identical to one another. After that occurred, we were able to look at the data that people were analyzing and start to group it into a couple of different categories. So that's when our sort of uh, star schema started to emerge, or what our data engineers on the project today ultimately turned into a SAR schema. But we did this using a template in Miro, just called a mind map. Um, so you can see that we put an academic department at the center and out of that, on the right-hand side, you see the sort of people that it serves, faculty, students, and staff, and the kinds of things it offers, courses or the, the resources it consumes like finance or grants. Of course, once we went broad, we had to start to narrow in on what was going to belong in our system. A data hub could serve a variety of needs and we had to pick the most important ones. So we used this bullseye template that I also found in Miro to start to winnow down what was going to be the most important for our system. Ultimately, this graphic was something we showed to probably more than 50 people. And every time it came up on screen, everyone said, oh, okay, I finally see the choices we're making and what we're gonna be trading off if we choose to prioritize X over Y. So this bullseye became really key to the early stages of our project. After that, it was time to wireframe. So we had some collaborative sessions working virtually with our stakeholders at this university where we'd sit on Zoom and say, okay, let's assume you're on a page that walks you through faculty HR information. What kind of questions are you hoping to answer? How are you, in what order are you going to answer those? What does a visual look like to you that answers that question that you have in mind? And so we started to plot it out in gray boxes with just words inside that said, tell me how many faculty are aligned to a certain department who might be of a certain rank, who might be of a certain age, who might be having certain demographic characteristics and tell me about the workload of those faculty members, things like that. Ultimately, we took those early stage wireframes, went back together as a product team, 
began to sift through them and say, okay, is that going to look better as a stacked bar chart or a pie chart or a line graph or a table, these kinds of things, and began to scope our MVP and make some decisions about when we thought we could deliver various pieces. We exported these wireframes as PDFs from Miro because that's such a great and easy to use feature when you've got everything aligned on a frame. And we were able to share this collaboratively with our stakeholders to have them give input over email about what they might want to see uh, included in the product or that they felt could be left behind for a future release. Ultimately, we built all of that into a product backlog uh, that has taken us almost two years to fully, fully build. We delivered our MVP within nine months, so pretty quickly, and we are still working on the project today. But I think ultimately what we've learned is that Miro allowed our stakeholders and our virtually based project team to collaborate really, really successfully. Also, participating in the discovery and the iteration really yields a product that actually meets customers' needs. So we really took a lot of time to walk our stakeholders through Miro to explain to them this cool new tool that a lot of them had not heard of or had a reason to use previously. And they really saw how participating in that wireframing process at the end of the day delivered them something that now they feel they can really use and trust. And so two years into the project, we are still delivering new visuals and data sources and still using Miro to innovate on these things. And I just can't wait to see what I'll be able to do next in this product. So thanks for attending this session. If you have any questions, my contact information was on the first slide. Feel free to reach out. And I look forward to hearing from you. Enjoy the rest of Miro Distributed.